Welcome to this special edition of Arkansas on Campus. Today, we're privileged to be joined by two of the area's top chief meteorologists, Garrett Lewis and Drew Michaels. And I know both of you have been incredibly busy over the last couple of days with all the storms mm -hmm. to come through the area. So thanks for being here with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you bet. Um, I'd like to start off and if you guys could just tell us a little bit about yourselves. You know, where you're from, where you grew up. What do you like to do when you're not being chief meteorologist? Gary, want to start off? Sure. Um, I'm from the Alma areas where I grew up and it's in the River Valley area. And um, I've uh, been doing this stuff for, I guess, about six or seven years. About the same time as Drew, we actually started within a couple months of each other in yep. the area. Um, I see in the spare time, I'm just usually doing stuff um, with my church, playing guitar, even though I'm terrible at it. Got enough for the calluses, but that's about it. Um, like to do stuff outdoors, like to go hiking, like to do mountain climbing, stuff like that, kayaking and that kind of stuff. Kind of an outdoorsy type person, I guess. Uh, I'm not from around here, which uh, probably isn't a surprise from you know a lot of the different talent in this market. But mm -hmm. uh, from outside of Chicago, uh, I was born in Green Bay, but grew up most of my life uh, in the suburbs of uh, Chicago. So I went to Northern Illinois University and uh, graduated from there with a meteorology degree and then a minor in journalism. So came down here for the weekend job and kind of moved you know moved along from there. So good opportunities and uh, there's no place like you know this mm -hmm. part of the country for you know for weather mm -hmm. and uh, yeah Garrett and I started same you know same time he's uh, he said more uh, more time as a as chief but very parallel you know mm -hmm. we've known each other for uh, you know for a while when it comes to I guess uh, spare time when we have it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know as of late we, we haven't had yeah. it a whole lot but and this area is so beautiful, uh, you know, hiking's great. Uh, got two Yorkies, uh, call them Dumb and Dumber, uh, but they're, uh, they're a handful. Um, and uh, so it seems like my wife and I are always dealing with that. But my wife's pregnant, so we're, uh, we're now in baby mode, which is, well, I'm hearing a lot about it. I, I, don't, know, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, so, um, you know, but uh, just hanging out and having a good time, so good. Now, when you guys were younger, were you both always fascinated by weather, or was there some specific event that made you guys want to be the weather guys? Uh, for me, I remember in the fourth grade watching a PBS special on tornadoes uh, out of the University of uh, Oklahoma, and I watched that thing over and over again, because when you're younger, you realize if you know something that you know, the other kids don't know. It's amazing they listen to you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So watched it over and over again. I don't know, it just became a real interest for me. And then, so from that point on, just started kind of reading a lot more. But we had a F5 tornado that went, uh, went through our area, oh, about 10, 15 miles west of our, of our house. But that killed 30-some um, people and uh, back in 1990. And that really kind of sparked a, you know, a lot of interest for me. And, and that's kind of, I think that's where it started. Mm -hmm. In mine, similar to that, in elementary school, I had a meteorologist come to the school and build an anemometer, and I thought, this is the coolest thing ever, you know? And I always wondered how in the world they can, it can be like, I mean, if you think about the weather within a 12-hour period, I mean, just look at yesterday when oh. you had, you know, tornadoes and hail like this big, and then it's just sunny, you know? And, and just being able to, to, just the awe of wondering, how in the world can they tell what's going to happen, you know, the next day without being able to actually see it happening right then, you know? And so I think it's kind of always intrigued me just the, the whole forecasting aspect of it. It's like I um, always tell Brad, the weather never ceases to make an idiot out of me, you know, because <laughs> it's like you, you think you know, but you really don't know. It's kind of like, you know, the whole Cribs thing. It's like you really don't know what's going on, what, you know, inside the weather world, because sometimes it looks like it's going to do one thing and then it'll do something completely different. Well, the, the intrigue is certainly a strong aspect of the weather, not knowing what's going to happen for, for sure until it yeah. really does happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, we've had some pretty bad weather here lately in, in the Fort Smith, Fayetteville area, but what's some of, is that some of the very worst that you've ever seen? Last, a uh, couple nights ago, I think it was definitely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Both of our stations were just bombarded with this golf ball or even larger mm -hmm. hail. Uh, both of our cars are damaged, you know. I mean, so you've got personal property that's being damaged, you know, in the, in the lot, mm -hmm. but you can't stop. You know, you've got mm -hmm. the roof that sounds like it's going to be yeah. you know, beaten in. The walls literally are shaking. And I guess our motto is you don't go off the air until you're knocked off the air, you mm -hmm. know. So, um, Which we even were at one point. Yeah. It, it, we were on and off. We had some cable issues and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But on analog, you know, people could still get it. And we both, both of our stations, we were talking about this earlier, got into kind of a safe, you know, safe place. But you're still, you still got to go with the show. You know? What what gives you that that motivation? You know, a lot of people would be like, 
I'm getting out of here. This, this is this yeah. is crazy. Well, what? I, the thought crossed my mind. You know, <laughs> <laughs> screw this. I'm out the door. That's you know, it. I mean, yeah. it was kind of like when the when like Drew was saying when the walls started shaking, they were doing that too, and it was like we're in the huge studio and you are yes. too, yeah. and that's the worst place you can be is a big open room mm -hmm. because of the stuff flying around. So once we started hearing that, then I thought. You know, looking at the velocity images and seeing that rotation just west of Fort Smith, I thought, crap, we're going to be in a tornado, you know? And so um, we made the call, and I said, let's just go. And, and inside of me, I'm panicking, you know, and I'm thinking, but if I lose it, the people in the control room had already lost it, and we had reporters running through the studio and just crying, you know? And I'm like, I've got the main thing we can do is just take a deep breath and do what we've been telling people to do for years and get inside somewhere that's safe. And so we just walked out of the studio, got in the hallway for about five minutes, let it pass, and we walked back out. But yeah, it's it's and I'm watching the tape. I'm like, man, I can't believe I was that calm because I was really freaking out. Right. I really thought we were the roof was going to block. I was telling Drew when I walked out of the studio, I was kind of looking back, just expecting to see the roof just go, you know, because the the sound was so unlike anything I've ever heard. Adrenaline's just going. Yeah, I mean, you've got it. You know, so. And we're weather geeks, you know, so yeah. it's exciting to us, you know. I mean, it's like, wow, look at all this. But then you realize there's, you know, the woman at home with her kids who is, yeah. who is crying, freaking out, going, just tell me if we're going to be okay, you know. So if we're on there, yeah, look at this storm and this is all, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. uh, that would be the last day on the air. So yeah. you got to really kind of hold it, you know, hold it back. So. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that reporters were crying. Was that because their cars were getting hit by hail yeah. or because, because they're actually scared for their lives? I'll call her out on this. It was Adria Goins. And she was, in the, <laughs> she was in the control, or she was in the newsroom, which is a different separate part of the studio. And the tornado policy for the newsroom is the edit bays, and for the studio, it's master control. And so she was in the newsroom, and she came tearing through the studio saying, The room's going to fly off. She's like, We're getting hit. And I'm like, And I'm on the air talking, and I'm just like, you know, I'm just like motioning to her, <laughs> shut up, shut you know. Up. And then she runs back across and gets Darren Bob, the main anchor, and Darren comes into the studio and she's like, what are we going to do? You know, and I'm like, get in the hallway, you know. And that's when I said, let's just move everybody in there. And when I started saying, let's take a deep breath, I was actually talking to Adria because I was just like, calm down, you know. And some of the other camera operators that were working too were really scared. And, and I mean, I was a little frightened too. I wasn't, I mean, I, I didn't feel safe for the first time in a long time doing yeah. it. Well, I, I certainly know the feeling growing up in Oklahoma and mm -hmm. um, this, Tulsa, this Tulsa area yep, and the bet. tornadoes. And, um, but I was more of a fan of going out and watching the tornadoes. Mm -hmm. what, um, what's been some of the more, you know, you talked about having to tell people, are, are you going to be okay or, or do you really need to, to get to a safe place? What, what's kind of the rewarding aspect of being a meteorologist? Well, I, I would say, I mean, obviously, we both love what we do, you know, so mm -hmm. when we go to our job, it's not a job, you know, it's not work. I mean, it's, you know, we enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, but from a public, you know, safety aspect, you know, it's our job to make sure that, you know, people are safe. And I had a wake up call when I visited the, uh, the Atkins tornado site uh, a couple of months ago and just seeing that damage. And, you know, I saw a slab and I saw this family's uh, mobile home that was obviously not there anymore and three people died you know right in that area and I guess the thing that I'll always remember was the little girl stuffed animal that was just mm -hmm. sitting there and it just you know you, you just looked at it and go this is this puts it in perspective you know it's not about well we're on the air here they're on the air here I, I, I look at it differently now you know it really changed kind of my perspective you know, on that. Yeah I agree with you it's, it's one of those things where it really brings it home when it when you see it, like you were saying, firsthand. And and a lot of times, television can be so, I don't know, <laughs> cheese ball with some of the promotion stuff that our it is. promotions you do. And yeah. we've got this. Look at our Doppler. It's huge, you know. Or we're, we've got this great story about supermarket savings, you know. But at the end of the day, the only time you really connect with that viewer is when they're in the closet and you're the only contact that they have with the outside world and their whole family depends on what's going to happen and what you say. And that's something that you really don't get until, like you were saying, yeah. it, and my whole thing was, was uh, May 30, 99, you know, when, the, right. when I was in Oklahoma City. Right. After that, I couldn't believe the amount of devastation because when you see it on TV, it's like, wow, there's houses and that house really got tore up. But when you see it in person, it's like, wow, there was a family in that house and there was a yeah. family in that, that shelter, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it really... It, I was talking to a buddy of mine last night about it. It makes you feel kind of, uh, and if I ever thought about, if I ever really sat down and thought about the accountability that I had and the responsibility, I think it would scare me because there's a lot of people that are watching us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that after, you know, like after an event, you're so amped up, you know, the adrenaline's still yeah. going, you're trying to go to sleep and you're just like, I want to, I just, I got to get some rest. Mm -hmm. But your mind is running and then you think about mm -hmm. what you just went through and uh, you'd rather not almost think about it, yeah. you know, because it's just, uh, 
there's a lot of accountability, like yeah. Aaron said. So, mm -hmm. um, but you don't think about it because the adrenaline's running, yeah. and maybe that's the natural process in the mm -hmm. body just to keep, you know, to keep going. Because otherwise, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> Nobody yeah. would be on the yeah. air, you know. Yeah. So. Well, you, naturally, as weather guys, you've seen a lot of damage from from different types of storms. What what type of storm have you seen that's caused the most damage? Has it been a tornado or flooding or hail, um, like this past week? I'll tell you what, I mean, what we just, what we just saw mm -hmm. in our immediate area um, from flooding to hail damage, wind damage, mm -hmm. possible tornado damage, I, I, that in, in our area, you know, I mean, other than, you know, the tornadoes that, you know, or the tornado that ripped through, you know, Van Buren, Fort Smith, or the yeah. Benton County tornado, yeah. uh, this kind of had every aspect yeah. to it, you know, and then, of course, you could just walk outside and, and look at, you know, all the cars bombed out and look at your car that's, you know, dimpled out and, you know, and it just uh, <laughs> kind of brings things, you know, brings things home. So um, I would say this, this past event was huge. Yeah, and I think looking back at the last two years, you probably agree with me on this, is we really kind of had a break. And it was kind of like, yes, I remember yes. last January when it was sunny and I thought, man, I'm going to pay for this one day, you know, <laughs> because it was like I had nothing to do. Yeah. And we had, you know, a foot of snow in March, we had a foot of rain in March. We've had tornado warnings in January and February and now March. and um, April and it's just like every month we've had a major weather event where for two years we maybe have had a few sprinkled in but we've had major weather events for the last four months and it seems like we're starting yeah. the severe weather earlier now. yeah you we know are. like when I got here it was like April May June mm -hmm. you know those are the months especially May but now it's like February you know February yeah. even January so you know we're uh, it's <laughs> we're constantly on call let's yeah. put it that way so. okay well, coming up after the break, we're going to let these guys get in front of the blue wall and, and show us a little bit of their technique. So stay with us. Dad, one time we all had dinner in the car. Mom says you have to come in now. Back to Arkansas on campus. Now I'm going to toss it over to the Blue Wall and Garrett Lewis, who's going to show us a little bit about what he does when he's given the weekly forecast. All right, well, in front of the blue screen here with uh, not a whole lot of graphics, and um, <laughs> it's, you know what? It's not a first to get in front of the wall and not have any graphics because sometimes that happens. Um, I think uh, as far as technique goes, um, it's funny because it's one of those things you don't think about. It's kind of like the first time you play Guitar Hero and you're terrible at it, and then after a while you can just jam. Um, I don't really think about it a lot when I do it now. I am right-handed, so I guess I have a tendency to step to the, to the left side and point with my right hand a lot more than I do with anything. Uh, the monitor I usually make sure is kind of angled off to where 
I'm, it looks like I'm looking at the screen because you don't want to be like this. And I've seen, you know, you've seen some weather people where they're like, like, there you go. The high is 51. It's like you're obviously looking at something. But sometimes I'll, I'll angle it off to a certain point to where it's almost like, and I'll even elevate it a little bit. Ours is a little bit higher at work, but I'll, I'll point it off to where it's, I, it looks like I'm looking back at the wall. And when I talk about the wall, I try to refer to the wall. So if I'm talking to you and I'm saying, look, you've got a high of 57, a low of 36, that's great, but look at this. And then when I point at something, that's when I'm referring to it. And um, I'll be honest, that's really most of the techniques that I learned was just to look natural in front of it. And it's hard when you first do it because you're, you want to point like out <laughs> and you don't realize that it's just right there, you know. But after you get to doing it a while, it's, it's really easy. And the new thing we've got now is this, this weird camera tracker thing that goes into our system. And when you push a button, it tracks the point farthest away from your body. So I have to be more conscious of if my leg's out farther than my hand, then it'll take my leg. And then all of a sudden, I'm zooming into Little Rock when I should have been zooming into Fayetteville. So um, I have to be a little more conscious of that. But um, as far as technique goes, I just try to make it look as natural as possible, uh, looking back at the screen, referring to something on the screen, and then looking back at the people at home and, and telling them what's going on. So what do you right. think? <laughs> <laughs> Want to give it a try? Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Garrett. Um, we're going to take another short break, and then Drew's going to get up there and show us what he likes to do. Stay with us. The Sports Advantage, Thursday at 9 on UATV. I'm Judy Shepard Missit, founder and CEO of Jazzercise. Join us for Jazz Cardio Strength Stretch. Each half hour program combines cardio, strength, and stretch routines for a total body workout and tips on health, nutrition, or exercise. Thousands of people have tuned in to Jazz Cardio Strength Stretch, and we hope you will too. Weekdays at 8.30 a.m. on UATV. Welcome back yet again, and now Drew's mic'd up there over in front of the blue wall, and we're going to let him take the show. I, I like what Garrett was saying earlier. I think he had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of good things. And I, I guess what you don't realize is when, when you're up here is, and I wanted to mention this, is, of course, you're ad-libbing everything. We're not reading, you know, reading the script. So some people get in, you know, get in the habit of memorizing and start to memorize what they're supposed to say. And I'll tell you what, you get all these different conversations in your head. No, it's not multiple personality. But, you know, you start, it's like you're up here, you're talking, yeah, we got a high of 57, but in the back of my mind, I'm going, you know, I haven't eaten today. I'm, I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> yeah, you know, what do I want? Hmm, I wonder, you know, is my wife making something at home? Do I need to pick something up? See, you're thinking of all these things going on in your, your brain. Just think how you multitask each day. So you, you're doing all that, talking and blah, blah, blah. But uh, one of the things I wanted to add to, uh, to what Garrett had to say was I think the hardest thing that we try to work on or at least that I'm trying to work on right now is as you're talking you know kind of you know in a pace you know talking about the forecast you know Friday high of 57 low at 36 degrees with a partly cloudy sky but notice you know cooler temperatures throughout the weekend and just almost pausing and stopping and so it's almost like you put on the brakes from what you're saying and the audience and the viewers at home they they may stop for a little bit because it, it seems a little awkward but you get their attention you know, or taking a step in, you know, to, uh, to the camera and just say, hey, I want you to take a look at this and bring them back you know, right, right to the wall. Uh, because sometimes you know, you've got this big wall and you're trying to talk about all these different things and 
you're in charge. I mean, you're the, you're the gatekeeper of the information. So if you can take a step and say, hey, but take a look at this trough out to the west, you know, and point at it and say, watch my hands, and people are going to be focused in right, you know, right on the hands. So you can actually bring them to exactly what you're, you know, what you're trying to talk to, so, or talk about, rather. So that's kind of a, you know, a way of doing it. Yeah, and like Garrett said, I mean, you know, last thing, for those of you in theater, you know, uh, doing any you know, theater, you never want to turn your back to the audience. And same thing here. So, you know, and we're profiling, obviously, not because we like our profile, but because, you know, we got to see what we're, you know, see what we're doing. So, you know, the more natural you can be, you know, the better. And uh, smiling is, you know, super important. You know, you could be having a bad day, you know, and you may be mad about something or something may not be going right, but you know what? Joe Blow at home could care less, you know? And if you're on there saying, you know, high 57 for Friday, Saturday 51 degrees, and, you know, with this, you know, blank stare on your face, people could be like, this guy, I, I don't relate to him, you know? So uh, you always have to be real conscious of, you know, of all those type of things. So I think we covered, you know, some of the techniques. It's weird for us to talk about it, you know, because we just do it, you know? You just kind of just get up there and do it, so. Well, thanks, Drew, and we'll be right back, and we're going to ask these guys a few more questions before we end this thing. Stay with us. How's it going? It's going good. Mom, get me on. You're at seven. With one of the largest donations ever made, the University of Arkansas has constructed a building for tomorrow's students, educating them to be crucial players in an evolving economy. With cutting-edge technology, the J.B. Hunt Center provides the best in the entire state. Students have access to research labs, wireless internet, camera equipment, and even spatial imaging. The J.B. Hunt Center for Academic Excellence, preparing innovators and leaders for 21st century Arkansas and the world. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Welcome back. I'm here once again with Drew Michaels and Garrett Lewis. And guys, again, thanks for being here. You got it. Um, I wanted to take the time to just ask you guys about, about a few issues in weather. Um, start wanted to start with global warming and kind of get your guys' thoughts on, on that. Where do we start? Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. I, I always tell people, um, uh, that I don't have all the answers because my degree is in geosciences. It's not climatology. I think I had two or three classes in climatology, so I may not know grasp the full effect of it. Um, I know when I go to the Buffalo and go kayaking, I don't want trash to be everywhere, so I'm, yeah. I'm pretty savvy about that, about being pro-environment, you know, maybe not to the extreme where I'm not going to cut down a tree and get some firewood, you know, but um, I, I really, I, I probably don't know most of the answers to it. I think there's probably people on each side of the debate that probably have some validity to it, but I think that there's so much political spin on both sides, it's hard to see what's real and what's not. Yeah, taking the politics out of it, you know, mm -hmm. Republican, Democrat, you know, that it's just, that's a bunch of blowhards in Washington, you know, mm -hmm. quite frankly. I mean, from my, from my perspective, I, I'm much like Garrett. I mean, I um, care about the environment, you know, obviously I, I'm not, I feel like I'm not doing the things that I probably could be doing, and I think uh, as a nation, you know, we could probably do more. And unfortunately, that's where we have to rely on government. But uh, when it comes to climate, you know, and people thinking about this whole system, you know, where you know where we live, what people are doing in the rainforest to the south is impacting, you know, weather patterns. You cut down forests, you create deserts. That's going to overall change patterns. So, global warming and pattern change. I mean, it's 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 happening. You know, I but nobody can really identify 
who's to blame? You know, and I think, but that's our society. You know, mm -hmm. who are we going to blame? You know, and I always say we're a Burger King society. Have it your way, right? Yeah. You know, we all want yeah. it. We want it fast. We want it now. And we're all like that. And uh, so I don't know if there's if there's better things that we can do. Then I'm all for it. Um, when it comes to you know reliance on oil and stuff, that's a win-win on every situation mm -hmm. from people fighting you know for that oil for all that you know environmentalists. You've got kind of an issue where you win on all sides yeah. when it comes to alternative energy. Mm -hmm. I don't see why this country honestly cannot have every household on solar energy or yeah. wind power or something like that. I mean, I I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason because, and in, in my opinion, you know, obviously in. The oil, you know, in this world and the way we, you know, we work, I mean, it's it's everything. It makes the world go round. So yeah. Yeah. that'll have to change. But um, I think it's happening. I don't know from exactly what source. Do I think humans have a cause? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, take a look at the CO2 over, mm -hmm. you know, uh, all the records and all of that. But uh, there's also natural, re you know, natural reasons going on, too. And that, yeah. so we battle that. You know, people want an answer and say, well, Drew, tell us an answer. You know, I don't have the answer. You know, I wish... Wish we did. Mm -hmm. I, I, there are a lot of people who wish there was an answer. Yeah. And it's it's certainly going to be an issue for many years to come. I think. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not like the uh, the whole El Nino catchphrase that was like yeah. back in the nineties. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Oh, it's that El Nino again. I'll tell you. Yeah. And now it's that global warming. You know, so I'm wondering if it's mm -hmm. it's going to be kind of something like that too, where people use it as almost like a catchphrase. You know. Yeah. So we'll see. Now, one one other thing I wanted to ask about is we've got a lot of students here in the studio today. And I mean, this is a university, and yeah. so there. Um, what are some things that you would tell aspiring meteorologists? What What would you tell them to do to to strive to do to look for um, in their career path? You want to start off? Yeah. Um, well, first thing with television, don't expect the world, <laughs> because the truth is, when you get into television, even though it may look like it's it's all that because you're on TV. You really don't make a whole lot of money, and you really don't have the, all the right equipment, and you don't have all the right tools that you need. And uh, it's a it's a budget bottom line business. So I mean, we're making we do what we can do with what we have, but you're going to end up with uh, the camera operators in the studio. Y'all are older than my camera operators now. I mean, they're literally in high school. There's a junior in high school. It's one of my camera operators. And when you try to get a junior in high school to set you up on camera, it can get frustrating because you're like. Get off your cell phone, shut up, and set me up. You know? It's like, <laughs> come on. And, I mean, if you don't have a whole lot of patience, I probably wouldn't get into it. If you really don't like what you do, I wouldn't get into it. Um, and if you're going to get into it, make sure you can tell a story. And it's, it's not just weather. Uh, it's everything, sports, uh, broadcasting, journalism, whatever. You've got to be able to tell a story. Um, and you have to, the way I look at it is, um, and Drew was talking about this earlier, you know, when you talk about saying pauses or speaking emphatically, you have to learn to be a better communicator in all that you do. And you have to learn to tell one story. So if the big story of the day is flooding, you have to nail flooding. Everything that you say has to tie into that one story. And if you start straying from that, the audience is going to be, they won't, they won't take it home. I always kind of look at it like going to church sometimes. Sometimes you can go to a church and a pastor can talk for an hour and you get out in the parking lot and you're like, what did he just say? You know, I have no idea. Um, my, the two things I do is say, what do they need to know? Why do they need to know it? And then once I find that story or that the, the main weather theme of the day, I, I pull the information out of that and I build around it and then I say, here's how you can apply it. So it's kind of like a little do this, do this, do this. When I first started, I didn't do that. Um, and I'm sure, Drew, you're probably the same. Well, you had a minor in journalism, so you might have known a little bit more than I did as far as communicating goes. But um, I had nothing. I had public speaking one and two in college, and they put me up in front of a camera in front of thousands of people and say, do a weather story. And I just started rattling information off. 70 here, cloudy there, sunny tomorrow. And you can just rattle information for so long, but people just don't get it. I mean, there has to be some kind of, of story and some kind of, you know, theme that goes through it. And I would also say you're going to get a million, you're going to get criticism like you've never gotten in your life, no. you know, and you've got to either learn to accept it and say, okay, maybe I could change this or dismiss it and say, this person's crazy and some of them are, or, uh, and consider the <laughs> all source. Of them are, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you got to consider the source. I mean, if someone's waiting for Survivor and you just blew it all out, then yeah, I mean, they're going to be upset about it. Um, but people, some of the emails, I've got a few F-bomb emails from the last system. And I, I don't know, did you? <laughs> yeah. yeah no, but no. I mean, and you got to look at it too. And you've got to be graceful with other people because the reality is hurt people hurt people. And if someone's having a bad day and you just blew out CSI Miami and they don't get to see Horatio take off the sunglasses and pull the jacket back, they're mad, you know? Well, so. we, are, um, we are just about out of time here. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said it best. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us today. We, um, we really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next time on Arkansas on Campus.
nothing uh, to be afraid of on Dixon Street. I'm Sandra Reynolds, and I'm part owner of Rogers Rick. I grew up kind of on Dixon Street. I'm John Lewis. I run the bank of Fayette. Being right here in the middle of Dixon Street, uh, we, we kind of have to go with the flow. Hi, I'm Tracy Harris. I have the chef salad for you, sir. I'll be right back with your dressing. So I'm a waiter at the brew pub. Moving with fries. Believe it or not, I've been educated down here on Dixon Street as well as I've educated people about laws. My name is Officer Daryl Slaughter. I'm a call back. I'm with the Fayetteville Police Department. Currently, I'm assigned to the Dixon Street Bike Patrol. We're all here and we're all together and we're all going to have to make it work. And it seems to be working on Dixon Street.